Hello, it's me, Robin, with Simple Food, Simple Life. Today I'm going to show you how I make jam, or sometimes I call it a fruit spread. You know how sometimes you look in your refrigerator and you forgot about that fruit that you wanted so badly? Well, that's what happens to me sometimes. So I happened to have some leftover fruit salad and I had some strawberries that were not the best anymore, but still good. They weren't spoiled. So I just put them in a pan and I put about, oh, I would say a cup and a third maybe of sugar. Honestly, I didn't measure, uh, but I'm just going to guess that's probably what it was. And I'm just covering them with sugar. Now, you don't have to add water or anything because you know fruit is mostly water anyway. So as it they cook, as the fruit cooks, it will the water will come out. So you don't have to worry about that. Now, I just sprinkle the sugar on top, turn the heat on about medium, and I'm just going to let this uh, cook and get hot until um, the water comes out in the fruit and it becomes syrupy. And I put a lid on just to start for good measure. I'm not going to keep the lid on, but we're just going to put it on just for the time being. All right, now you can see that the mixture is starting to become liquid. So, and I will take a potato masher. That's what I have, so I'm going to use it. Uh, and I will mash up the fruit and as, it, as it cooks and make it a little bit smaller and softer. And um, if you don't have a potato masher or you have a stick blender, then you want it more smooth, then by all means, use that. Then it will be more like a jam consistency rather than a preserved consistency. Now remember, these aren't preserved. They're going to be in a jar and they're going to be in the refrigerator. You have to keep them in the refrigerator so they don't spoil. Now you see that the liquid has come up a lot more. It's starting to, and the sugar is melting. It's starting to become more syrupy. And that foam that you see on the top, well, that happens. Don't worry about it. You don't have to take it off. It will disappear. Just make sure that you periodically stir the mixture. Now I'm just using my, my uh, potato masher and I'm just going to mash the fruit. I'll do this a couple of times till it's the consistency that I want. It's pretty easy to do. Don't you think so far so good? Don't you think you could do this? I think it's very easy to do. So I'm just getting it mashed up. Like I said, I'll do it a couple more times and then that way um, it'll be the consistency I want. But if you want to use a stick blender, by all means, you can make it more of a jam consistency. Sometimes people in their um, fruit spread, they don't like to have big chunks. I don't want them too big, but I honestly don't mind being able to see the fruit. Now, keep in mind, you can use any fruit pretty much that you want. Uh, the fruit salad even had mangoes in it. It had um, pineapple, all kinds of things. Now, I'm going to squeeze the juice from this one lemon, and at the end of the cooking process, I will put in the juice of one lemon. And what that lemon juice does, it tends to tighten up the mixture. Plus, it gives it a nice um, tart background, which is a good contrast against that sugar. Oh, and you see the pan there on the other burner? That's just some ham that I'm cooking up. I had left over, and, and I'm cooking that up uh, in a, with a little broth, and that's for later. That has nothing to do with this jam whatsoever. <laughs> Keep stirring the mixture off and on. Just stay close by. You don't have to babysit it, but just stay close by and, and watch your heat because, oh, Lord have mercy, you don't want this to uh, boil over. That would be a terrible mess. All right, now you see how it's cooking down, and that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the, the liquid to become more syrupy and... Um, then, of course, I'm going to smash it up some more because I won't until I get it the way I want it. 
but it will get more syrupy. You see that it has boiled down quite a bit. And another thing that you can look for, as it gets more syrupy, it will steam less. So that's one of the ways you know you're getting where you want to be. Easy so far, isn't it? Don't you think? I think it's very easy. See? See how much that has cooked down? That's cooked down quite a bit. And then just scrape your sides and and stir it up and make sure, whatever you do, make sure that it does not stick. So sometimes you just have to keep adjusting your heat a little bit. Uh, but just the important thing is, it's better if it takes a little longer and you put your heat a little lower. That's fine. This really does not take very long. And the best part is you're not throwing that fruit away that you might have tossed because it was less than perfect or maybe it was a little soft to eat fresh. Just do it this way. You know what? This really tastes good on ice cream. Now, I have a spoon here that I put in the freezer and um, it's nice and frozen. And this is how I test to see if it's the consistency I want. I dip my frozen spoon into the mixture and I see... Uh, how long it takes to drip off of the spoon. The slower it is, the closer it is to being done. And also, when you run your finger across the spoon, it should need, leave a nice demarcation there where your syrup is thicker. Now, my, my consistency is not quite the way I want it to be yet, but it's getting there. It's only going to be a few minutes, and it will be where I want it to be. In the meantime, I'm going to rinse the spoon off, put it back in the freezer, so I can use it for the next test. Now you see how that's cooked down? It's cooked down quite a bit more. And actually, I think we're just about there. You know, I appreciate you being with me during these times. And if, if you like what you see, please subscribe and be sure and share. Everything I do is usually so simple that anybody can do it. And sometimes, especially in these times where sometimes it gets a little rough and uh, sometimes it's hard to tie the strings together uh, we can do it and uh, I'm just if this helps you that's awesome now look see how it's it's really cooked down now now I'm ready to add my lemon juice because it's the consistency that I want it to be get that stirred in really well It's amazing what lemon juice will do for any kind of jam or preserves that you make. Oops, now look, it's time to pour this mixture in the jars. Now, all I have is a mason jar. I've got my, my canning funnel. These are invaluable. If you don't have one, get one. They're worth it, even if you don't can. And I'm just going to pour this very, very hot mixture into the jar. Now, be very careful when you do. And I'm going to... Um, don't forget that this has to be stored in the refrigerator. These are not preserved by any means, okay? Now, I'm going to get approximately one and a half pints out of this fruit. I think if you try this, you'll be amazed at how much you actually get out of just leftover fruit that is not as fresh as it once was. And honestly, um, you can, you seriously can use just about any any fruit. Uh, the fruit salad had mangoes, it had um, melon, it had 
pineapple, it had strawberries, it had all kinds of fruit in there. So don't be hesitant. You just use whatever fruit you have. I even made a delicious fruit spread one time out of kiwi fruit that was very sad, but it made a wonderful jam. Now we're just going to scrape all that in there. And I like to put the lid on right away. What happens when the mixture is very hot, the lid seems, will form a seal when it cools off. Now it's not preserved, but that seal will help your uh, jam uh, well, of course, jam lasts forever, but will help your product stay a, a little bit longer, a little bit nicer for a long period of time. So see how easy that was? Listen, if I can do it, you can do it. I'm telling you, this is so easy and so good. I think you're absolutely going to love it. And as always, you just remember that little is much. When God is in it. I love you guys. And I will see you later. Bye.